It's early 1962 and I had all these plans. Finish my master's degree, you know, and get a good job in Dallas, Fort Worth area and get married to my sweetheart. And, and then I get this letter. Okay, congratulations, you've been selected through the selective service system to, you know, report for uh, a physical and, uh, and an examination in preparation to be inducted into the army for two years. I mean, it was like, whoa, that's not what my plans were. It's like, okay, now what do I do? So I applied to officer candidate school for the Navy in Newport, Rhode Island, and I got accepted and I beat the draft. I just got in under the wire kind of thing, you know. I requested uh, service on a, on a ship, primarily a, um, a destroyer or a frigate or something like that. I wanted to be on a ship that, you know, fought wars, right? And, and I requested uh, West Coast as a home port, and I, I got everything I asked for. I got a, uh, I was home ported in San Diego. I was on a, a destroyer. My ship was the, uh, the Floyd B. Parks, uh, designated DD-884. My ship was a ASW, you know, submarine warfare ship. In other words, that's, that was the specialty of the ship. It got the, it got the most modern, most powerful new sonar for detecting subs. Okay, I was responsible for the for the for the sonar technicians and the torpedo men and the ASROC team. Use that method and and uh, uh, a junior officer that managed the drone and our submarine helicopter. Those were my my team. On the West Coast in the Navy, you, ships would deploy on what's called the Westpac cruisers. And so in 63, we did a Westpac cruise. And that's a big, huge group of ships all go to the West, over to uh, Asia, to Japan, Philippines, South, South China Sea, in that area and and you're gone for six months and that was during a time when there was the cold war was was on okay if you know anything about the russians their biggest uh, submarine base happens to be on the pacific side of uh, russia and so they they deployed submarines out all up and down that that area and so when we were when we were out and about we would be hunting for Russian submarines just to keep track of them they we weren't at war so we couldn't drop a bomb on them but we wanted to uh, develop our skill to find them in February of 65 we deployed to Westpac again and by this time, there was fighting going on in Vietnam. Along about July, June or July, uh, things began to escalate. And planes uh, from the aircraft carriers, as well as from uh, the base near, uh, the ground base near uh, Da Nang, started flying missions into North Vietnam. But the other thing, the primary thing we were there for was if, uh, if the if the North Vietnamese with their you know handheld SAM rockets or whatever or artillery were damaged a, a plane, and if they could get to the Gulf and get anywhere near us, and they would they would parachute out of their planes, and then we would pick them up. We were picking up an average, during that time, we were picking up an average of one or two pilots a day. And at this one point, 
I happened to be on, on the watch and, and this uh, pilot calls and, and says, you know, the front end of my plane, it, it, the nose of my plane has been blown off. And I gave him the order, I said, put your plane in a descending circle, you know, 800 feet up, you know, and eject and we'll pick you up. So they ejected, but the problem was the plane stayed up there, and kept circling. And so it was, it was, it was in the way, it was, it was dangerous to be there. So we got, we got orders to shoot it down. So we shot down our own plane. <laughs> It was crazy, but that was good because my gunnery guys got some some gunnery practice on a live plane. But one of the traditions in the Navy is if you if you pick up a pilot from a from an aircraft carrier, okay, when you take them back, they have to send you ice cream and movies. And since you know our two sister ships, we were picking up one or two pilots a day you know kind of deal and and uh and so we were getting a lot of ice cream and good movies latest movies <laughs> a lot of people have heard about an, something called the tonkin gulf incident the two ships were the turner joy and the maddox they were destroyers like us but and they were up there doing the same thing picking up pilots and whatever and one night they got chased by North Vietnamese torpedo boats, which was the first actual attack of ships by North Vietnam. Our two ships, Parks and Wilson, it's kind of like the second man on the moon. Nobody knows who they are, right? We got chased by torpedoes boats one night too, but nobody heard, ever heard about that. You know, it was, so what? <laughs> but it did happen. And it was middle of night. Uh, and we couldn't see anything, except we got them on radar, right? First thing we'd do is we'd, we would go as fast as we could, <laughs> full speed ahead. And we would start maneuvering. And there was two of us. And so, you know, we would try to, maneuver one of us out of the way and then try to you know shoot shoot the torpedo boat if we got hit by a torpedo we would probably sink or or have serious damage okay if they had been any good if they had been good enough they would have lobbed a shell onto us you know fortunately we were better shots than they were that's exciting and and scary at the same time. The scariest moment I had when I was in the Navy was when we were running away from a typhoon that had 200 mile an hour winds. When you have that kind of, of sea, that kind of swells in daylight, you get what's called green water. You see, and the sunlight comes through the back side of the swell, and it kind of makes the swell green. So here I am, top of my head's 48 feet above the water, right? And I am looking up at the top of the swell. And we're doing this, and every time we went through a swell, the ship would shudder like this, and you just, just say, oh man, next time it's gonna just break in half. That's what it felt like. Above, above the compass, about where that microphone is, was a thing called a clinometer. What it basically did was it told you, told you how much your tilt was. You were talking about the, the tilt of the ship. Okay, the clinometer would tell you how much you were tilted. If, if the clinometer got to 60 degrees either way, you risk turning turtle and sinking. And we made a turn while I was on watch, and I watched the kilometer go to 52, and 54, and 56 before we got through the turn. 
That's the scariest I ever was in my life. I got out of the the uh, Navy from active duty in um, late September 65. And after that, then I went back into the civilian world, got a job, and but I had ended up with three years of reserve duty. I served my country in a time, in the beginning, in a time when there was still a sense of patriotism, I believe, okay? And I grew up with that. From the time I was old enough to understand, I, I had expected that I would serve in the military because that was the history of my family. It never entered my mind that I don't think that I would ever not serve somehow, okay? And I was, I was proud and glad to do it. I was very blessed. Been blessed all my life, you know. I had a wonderful wife. We were married 58 years before she passed. I have three amazing children with good spouses. I've got nine fantastic grandchildren. So my life has been blessed. If I had to do it all over again, I'd do it all over again.